Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. So, under 15 minutes, there is no way I can tell you everything about UV sterilization, but what I can do is tell you how I handled it in my system and give you some things to think about. I decided way back when I had the white slime nightmare that this was never gonna happen to me again. And for that reason, I made a decision at the time that I would have a UV sterilizer on my next tank. And that's because most of the reading that I did, the very first recommendation was try a UV sterilizer to kill the extra bacteria or whatever it was that was causing the slime. I did a ton of research into UV sterilizers and I kept coming back to one website, American Aquarium Products. The amount of information on this site is just absolutely amazing. I thought a good place to start might be at the end to show you the results of running a UV sterilizer on my new tank for the past four months. The water is amazing. You can see how crystal clear it is. Not only does the water look clear, it has the benefit of being healthy. There are pathogens in water and pathogens are introduced via all kinds of things. They come from pollen in the air. They come in on frag plugs or even when you put your hands in the tank, you don't realize, even if you wash your hands, there might be something that is brought with your skin into the tank. One of the most common myths about UV sterilization is that it removes beneficial bacteria from the water column. Well, bacteria shouldn't be in the water column. The beneficial stuff lives in your tank, on surfaces, in the rocks, in the sand. Any that's in the water column is surplus to requirements and in all likelihood, it's also giving you cloudy water. Cloudy water isn't very nice to look at if you can even see it. But even if you can't see it, if there's bacteria in your water and it's making it even slightly cloudy, it's also impeding the transmission of light through the water to your coral. And that's not a good thing either. I've always wondered why UV sterilization works to improve water quality. What's the mechanism behind this purification? It's actually pretty basic. Sterilization is defined as the removal of microorganisms or pathogens and ultraviolet light wavelengths being potent sterilizers do just that. So a UV sterilizer works primarily because it sterilizes via ultraviolet light there's an important secondary effect, and that's its effect on redox. What is redox? Well, I always thought I knew what that was. I thought, well, um, reducing oxygen, but no, I was very, very wrong about that. Redox is a contraction of two words, reduction and oxidation. And there are various ways that reducers and oxidizers work in our water. But the thing about ultraviolet sterilization is that it improves redox. It improves ORP, which is oxidation reduction potential. And why does that matter? Well, ORP is a measurement, and the measurement is expressed in millivolts of the potential of your water to become pure. But that purity can't go too far. ORP needs to be within a certain range for the water quality to be balanced because excess oxidation makes the water too clean. So UV light helps with that. It's a little bit of an electrochemical paradox that ultraviolet light is actually an oxidizer, but it creates a chemical reaction that inhibits oxidizers and it acts almost like a reducer. So it helps eliminate excess oxidation in water and it maintains that important balance for ORP. If you're interested in reading in depth about electrochemistry, I'll leave a link in the description to the American Aquarium Products website with an article on redox. I've touched on how UV sterilization works to make water more healthy. And one thing to think about is many, many water treatment facilities all over the world use ultraviolet light to kill stuff in the water that they process to remove unhealthy components and make the water safe to drink. It's really good to know what your objectives are in getting a UV sterilizer. Maybe you just want crystal clear water, or maybe like me, you want to kill anything in your water that might be bad. 
In my case, it was the white slime bacteria that made me realize I needed to do something about this so it would never happen again. Maybe you never quarantine anything that goes into your tank. If so, you'll want a UV sterilizer to help kill the bad stuff. So now you've decided, yep, I'm gonna get me a UV sterilizer. Well, how on earth do you choose the right one? One thing that helps is to know that there are various levels of sterilization available. The lowest level is clarification, and these smaller units, which consist of a small pump and a small bulb, really can't even be considered as sterilizers, although they use UV light. What they do generally is remove algae from the water column and perhaps some excess bacteria. I have one, I've used it on my small system, and it worked very well to make the water clear when I had a little bit of an outbreak. But I wasn't kidding myself. I knew that the water wasn't being purified to the level that it could be with better dwell time. A big step up from clarification is level one sterilization. And here's where dwell time starts to make an impact. Water needs to stay beside the bulb as long as possible without heating up in order to kill as much bacteria and pathogens as possible as it travels past the bulb. Level one sterilization is a certain flow rate past a certain length of bulb exposed to a certain wattage of light. And these are all calculations that can be done or references that can be pulled from charts. And then we have level two, where dwell time really does matter. And a level two capable UV sterilization unit is usually a lot larger and the bulb is long enough that the water has good dwell time. The aim with level two is to remove as close to 100% as possible of any microorganisms or pathogens that might be in the water. So I relied on American Aquarium Products advice on which type of sterilizer I should go with. They helped me through the process of figuring out my objectives, what I could expect from the various types of units, what was realistic with my particular situation, and from there, I made a good decision, I think, on which sterilizer would work best for me. So the Vecton 2 unit that I'm using is rated for 60 to 100 gallons at a level one sterilization. In my case, I don't have much space in my cabinet to put in a larger unit, but this is satisfactory to me. I'm using the lowest setting on the pump to improve the dwell time around the bulb, but you'll see that a little later. It's really tempting to throw on a really high wattage UV bulb and figure that that's gonna take care of everything for you. But you're wasting those watts if you don't have the proper water flow going past that bulb. It's a matter of matching the wattage of the bulb to the flow from your pump to the level of sterilization that you're trying to achieve. And one further thing to consider when looking at UV sterilizers, look for low pressure bulbs or lamps, as opposed to medium pressure lamps. Low pressure lamps will put out far more UVC light, 35%, compared to only 7% from medium pressure lamps and you want as much as you can possibly get. Intermission to rest your brain. My brain sure needs rest. It took me ages to figure all of this out and if it wasn't for the help from Devon at American Aquarium Products, I still would be trying to figure out what the heck to do about a UV sterilizer. And one final point, there are UV sterilizers for every application. This is something I learned. Even if you have a canister filter running a nano tank, there are sterilizers that you can install right in your return hose that will treat the water effectively. So please don't let your size of system hold you back from looking into getting a UV sterilizer if you think you want one. After a lot of back and forth conversation with Devin at American Aquarium Products and a heck of a lot of help from him, I ended up with a kind of non-standard installation in my system, um, <laughs> kind of like a lot of the things that I do. And next up, I'm gonna show you that. So we're on the left-hand side of my cabinet, and this is not installed in place yet. It's just here to check 
the lengths of the hoses that are needed. So my non-standard installation takes a hose from the outflow and directs it into the sump, into the chamber where the pipes come down from above. And from there, it circulates through the sump. The actual pump for the sterilizer is in the back of my return chamber. And that's what makes it non-standard. It basically circulates through the sump. We've set it up here so that the length of hose going from the bottom of the sterilizer unit to the pump is the correct length for the installation we're planning. Now we have to check that the flow is within the range it needs to be to provide me with level one sterilization for my 100 gallon system. So we plugged in the pump and got it started and I timed how long it took for two gallons of water to go into the jar and it turns out the very lowest setting on the pump is what's going to work for this sterilizer. So today's the day the UV sterilizer is going to be installed and I'll be running it for the first time. And wouldn't you know, as luck would have it, I have some cloudy water. This is because I was messing around with a diabolical valve and created some massive downflows of water that completely flushed out that back chamber and put a lot of gunk into the water. Over on the right hand side of the cabinet, where all the wires are, is the power center for the entire UV sterilizer, the pump and the light. This is actually a transformer to bring it down to the 110, 120 volts that we need here in North America because this comes from Britain. It's really convenient because the pump is plugged in and I can switch it on and off very, very easily. The nice thing about this unit, as you can see, is that the outside cover comes off and this is going to make it a lot easier for maintenance. The cover's back on and now we're going to test the pump. When we turn it on, water will travel into the sterilizer, so of course the level of water in the return chamber will drop slightly. We have to run it for a few minutes to make sure that everything circulates properly in the sump. And my plan is to just add a little bit more salt water to the return chamber to balance things out. Okay, the switch is about to be flipped. Let's see if we have any leaks. There's the water. And the air is getting pushed out into that chamber. What's the water level like here? Yeah, definitely going down. Okay. Don't see any drips. Even with the reflection of the window, Hopefully you can get an appreciation of how super, super clear the water is. It's, it's just stunning. And all of this crisp detail on video is through the glass and through the water. There's no haze, there's no um, particulates, there, there's just, it's it blows me away.